and welcome back to my channel, Happy Artist. This is a very, very exciting poll for me. It's another one of those beginner's techniques that I'm going to explain. I was planning on doing a simple Dutch pour, like what we've seen plenty of people do where you've got a dark band at the bottom, a light color at the top, a stripe through the middle, and then you pour and wait for it to dry. I was very, very enthusiastic with my medium and landed up putting in quite a bit of medium with some extra water and thinned down my paints further than I should have. I specifically did this because I was trying to see if my paints were thin enough, how far would they bleed. So that means that if your paints are very thin, while the paint is still drying, it's going to continue to move for quite a while. So that could create cracking. But what I'm trying to see is how far will it move without cracking if there's quite a bit of water that you've used to thin down your paints. mentioned in my previous video. You'll see in the description below if you're looking for really good quality pre-mixed acrylic paints. So pouring paints that don't need medium. All you would need to do if you need to thin the paint down even further is a little bit of water. You are welcome to order your Gecko Art pre-mixed paints through me, as well as many other options. Canvases, silicone, resin, there's a whole list of things. You can pop me an email at happy.artist.tash at gmail.com. I'll then send you the list and you will get 10% discount if you order through me. is add a little bit of both base colors to each side of the line that you've created with the new colors. The reason we need to do this is it assists the line of colors with movement. If you don't have enough paint on the canvas as a base layer, chances are there is so little of the paint that you're using for your colors, it's not gonna move very far. So you're wanting them to move not only slightly further across the canvas, but into each other as well. Once you've got that base color down, you do need to blow it over the line that you have created. Again, this is just to assist the colors with their movement. Right, so blown out, it looks awesome, right? And then put it onto a time lapse just to see if anything would happen. But not much happened in about 15 minutes. So I thought, great, I'm going to take the camera away and I'm going to let this dry and see what happens when I come back in a few hours time. Now, something that I have seen so often is when people show a photo of what it looked like when it was wet and what it looks like now that it's dry and then ask questions about what happened. So with the amount of water that I had mixed into my paints, specifically the base paint, because that's what needs to be thin, I created fractals or dendrites. 
This is a word that you probably won't even Google because you won't know about them. Some call them fingers, some call them coral. I guess it depends on what you see these images look like. I then put this back onto time lapse and I'm so upset that I missed the beginning of this reaction. But basically what's happening is because there's so much water, the paint is bleeding further than just a beautiful little bump. It's actually splitting or fracturing into the paint. You can also force this with very high flow paints which you can buy, not pre-mixed paint or pouring acrylics. They need to be very, very high flow, again, so that it can have this desired effect. Another way that you can do it is taking your consistency down to its lowest level that you're comfortable with, and then adding water in small, small droplets onto the paint once you've poured. But you do run the risk then of it going crazy. These grew continuously for about three or four hours. I eventually had to actually put a wedge at the back of the canvas to make sure that they don't just grow straight through all that beautiful negative space. And I wish I'd done that earlier. And that's as quick and easy as that. So it's a dust pool that starts to create fractals or dendrites. And it looks to me, as a diver, like a beautiful coral garden. These beautiful Gregorian fans in different colors, because usually they're orangish, growing on this awesome rock face in the ocean. What do you see? Have you tried this technique before and got it right? I hope you have a magical day. Ciao for now. So firstly, because that's what, that's, thank you for watching. <coughs> Thanks, thank you, thank you. For you, Gecko Art Paint. No, 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 no. If you are looking, no. Oh, what are they called? Fractals? I think they're fractals and I've got to go find out.